Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hopecast. Today we have with us Minister Latoya Hall Donner. Three cheers, please. Yeah, Latoya is our worship leader and an international recording artist. She is a mother to my friend Gabrielle and wife to the indomitable Charlon Donner, a wonderful man of God and a beautiful family. She's here to share with us. So hi, Latoya. How are you? Hello. I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Welcome to Hopecast. Thanks. It's been a long time coming, huh? Yes, oh, it's wow. been a while, but here we are. Here we are. Let's um, yeah, I was introduced to you as a worship leader. You know, it's it's who you are introduced to me as. I'm sure you are many, many other things, but you are known as a singer. You are, it's like an identifier. The singing minister is you. <laughs> it's you. Um, how old were you when you started singing? Um, as old as three, or should I say as young as three? <laughs> Wow, do you remember that first song or so the first time you sang publicly? You remember the first song? My first memory um, was singing at church, probably about four or five, somewhere there about singing Jesus Loves Me. Um, I guess that was my favorite song because you know I, I guess I used to sing that a lot. <laughs> Well, when did singing become a ministry? Because I'm sure, you know, when you're singing in church at three years old, I, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, so cute, girl, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when did it move from that to like a ministry for you? Um, in primary school, actually, when I started singing with my, my god brothers and god sister. So we had a group called the Young Thrillers, which is made, which is made up of the children of Noel and Shirley Willis, along with myself. So I am the godchild. So they always say that I'm the daughter. I'm, I'm the one that looks like Auntie Shirley. <laughs> but um, the four of us, we used to sing together in primary school and we used to open at concerts mm -hmm. for Grace Drillers. We used to sing at ISCF concerts and, and stuff like that, go around to different schools and churches and we used to sing a lot. So, so that for me started, you know, with the foundation mm -hmm. of, of my singing ministry. And then from there, I have been part of various groups at church. You know, there was one with about four or five of us girls called Emeralds for Christ. And um, again, we used to sing a lot in church and youth achievement and win and all of those most <laughs> wonderful things. Um, so it, it was from there and it, it really just grew and developed mm -hmm. into what it is today. Yeah. Um Oftentimes we hear the joy of the Lord is our strength and you're encouraged that to be happy as believers, you're encouraged to be happy, you're encouraged to have that um, it is well attitude like the Shunammite woman, you're, you know, you're looking at death and there is a preacher somewhere telling you to say it is well <laughs> and it can, it looks a little contradictory and it doesn't even look, it is, a, this is very contradictory, the kind of mindset, the positive mindset that scripture encourages us to have, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. But is there a moment in time when actually singing a song was the only strength that you had? Many times, <laughs> many, many times there. There have been so many times when I would have the responsibility of leading worship um, or going to minister at, a, at an event and uh, I don't feel like it. Where my situation, my personal situation does not add up, it does not line up with, 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 with what I'm 
I'm going to be singing. Mm-hmm. But um, what I've learned over the years is that truth is different from facts. Yeah. Tell me facts, more. <laughs> facts, facts change. Facts mm-hmm. can change. In this moment, I may be sick. It's a fact that I may be sick or I may not have any money. It's a fact that that, that I, I, I may not have any money, but the truth is I serve a God who is a provider and that doesn't change. I serve a God who is a healer and that doesn't change. And so I have to be deliberate in choosing to focus on the truth as opposed to the facts. Yeah, because the facts can be depressing the facts will be depressing. The facts will make you feel um, incompetent. Facts will make you feel like you're unworthy. Facts will make you feel depressed and despondent. But focusing and channeling your energy towards the truth, the, the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And so focusing on Jesus, who is the truth, focusing on the word of God, because Mm -hmm. the word became flesh. flesh. My God, you see? So just by doing that, your your spirit now responds. Responds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And out of that bursts a praise. Yeah. So my facts may still be the same at that moment yeah yeah but it's gonna change because the truth is that our god is a redeemer or god is a savior he is a keeper and i rest assured in that truth just a quick announcement to let you know that you can enjoy 15 percent off all surely goodness apparel with the code hope 15 that's hope 15 for 15 percent off check their instagram oftentimes the music that we lean into in different times is as a result of the season we're going through um when i listen to your way i real your way is not one song <laughs> obviously it's an album but it seems to reflect a journey like it's there the, all the different songs on the album can speak to many different seasons like it is not a one-time album it is a it's an album for all seasons basically Correct. yeah Correct. but when you wrote your way is it is it like a was it like a reflective thing that you were looking back on your journey or was it speaking specific to that season that you were in at that time it was it was a present response um i was in a time when i was I, I was frustrated. I was um, angry. I was, yeah, I was, I was at my wit's end because I would have tried different things, different angles, different options, different outlets. And you seem to always end up in a brick wall. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, okay, God, I'm, I'm the type of person where I like to, kind of see where I'm going or kind of mm-hmm. see a couple steps ahead before I make the first step and the Lord had to kind of change that perspective for me like literally just change those <laughs> <change. Some laughs> drastic lessons right there wow. um, to just change that perspective for me because um, as the verse says I tried to do it on my own went through the logic, weigh all the pros and cons mm-hmm. and all of that. But I can't find the formula to yes. say, yeah, this is it. Yeah, I, I'm, I get it now, mm-hmm. you know? And you're forced to wait on God. And the waiting seems long. And, and, and so, so I just give up my hand and say, all right, God, you, 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 you make your point. And my response is your, your way. way. Yeah, because I can never go wrong with your way. Right? So I just go and chill. I encourage myself. I say, all right, go and strengthen yourself, Latoya. Yeah, the Lord is going to work it out. So it makes no sense 
to beat up on yourself and worry about it. And that is something that I'm learning even now. I spoke earlier about the facts versus the truth. When the facts come upon you like a tsunami and it's right up in your face, I said, don't you see that this is your situation? Don't you realize that, hey, you don't have no money? You don't see that the bills are there and there is no money to, to, to pay? Don't you see that all your shows got canceled? Don't you see that this, this, and, and yeah, you know, so say, you know, feel good. You don't feel it. You don't feel the pain right there, that kind of a thing. And it's there and it's jarring at you and, it, and it's just, you know, almost like sticking you in the eye. But you have to be resolute to say, hey God, this is your thing. I am doing this as unto you. I'm not doing it for myself and I am your child. And if I am surrendered to you, then you will take care of everything else for me. So until you do that, I'm gonna praise you. Yeah. Um, until it is that you, you make a way, until it is that you come through in the best way that you see fit because you're working all things together for my good, then be because you're doing that and you're watching over your work that you have started yes. uh, on to completion, until your next step is made clear to me, I'm gonna just praise you. That's, that's mm -hmm. all. I, I put my, I, as I said to our, um, a church that I preached at the other day, I said, I'm gonna just give my praise deposit yes. before, I, before I actually need to make a withdrawal when I'm so low that I don't even have the words to say, oh God, it's your way, but my spirit will cry out on my behalf. Yeah, and make intercession for me, whether it's with groanings or whatever. But once it is that you have the ability to, and that is why praise and worship is so, um, so dear to me, because it is my lifeline. It really is my lifeline. And... Um, it, it, I try my very best to make it my lifestyle so that everything that I do gives honor to God. Everything that I do, um, everything about me uh, gives glory to God. Yeah? yeah. So that's pretty much how I live. <laughs> yeah. So um, a, a big part of your life is worship, which makes sense, right? So I know that you also, you enjoy the music. You have to enjoy it. You have to love it. If you, you live it, you have to love it. And so you find that you find that a lot of the songs that um, that are written um, between myself and my husband, a lot of the songs that we write are prophetic in nature in the sense that it's me writing a song like Praises Up or so. Um, it's not saying that, oh, I feel like jumping all over the place and give me praise. I may not feel that way now, but I am speaking to my spirit, say, hey, this is what you're going to do. Come on now, get up, get up, get up. You see the horizon and, and your heart wants to give praise and your flesh is saying, oh, no, you don't feel like it. Just go back to bed. You don't want to wake up, whatever. No, but you get up, get up, get up that kind of a thing. So that is how a lot of the songs come. But is there any moment in time where you're just caught up in the moment, just in worship, and you're just enjoying the music, enjoying the melody, enjoying the sounds? Man, I like to sometimes I have to stop myself and all I'm hearing is just the bass and I'm like, boy, that's a good, and, and I, I'm not listening anymore and I'm just like, that's, that's a good bass line. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, yes. And then I have to bring myself back and say, come on, Stasian. You're, you're, you should be connecting with God and not just enjoying the art, not just enjoying the art. How, as a worshiper, how do you balance that? And how can we as believers balance the enjoyment? Um, well, uh, I think I dealt with this in one of, one of my conferences probably about two years ago. The topic was the art versus the heart of worship, because there is an art to worship. Um, and, and there is also the heart of worship, which makes the art real. Mm -hmm. So the art of worship deals with the technicalities, you know, your skill set, how it is that it is presented, the professional manner in which 
it is produced and presented, yes. which is extremely necessary. Yes. Right? That is a channel through which you're going to, to, um, to bring the message of the gospel across through music. Fine. And, but the fuel that makes it move is the heart behind it. The, perp, the, the, you know, the, the heart condition. Mm -hmm. How is it that you are connected to God and you're using your connection to God to influence and infiltrate the art mm -hmm. so that the art can move the people? Mm -hmm. So plain art is showmanship, mm -hmm. right? You can go to a concert and you can get that and that's, that's mm -hmm. fine. And you leave the same way that you went in. You say, oh, that was a good show. Yeah. Right, one and thing. Um, but when the heart connects with the art, yeah. that's where then that is where transformation takes place. Yes. That is where an encounter and, a, and an experience with God takes place. And you can leave that event saying, hey, I met with God tonight. Yeah, and and I feel transformed as a result, and and empowered within yes. myself to be able to take on life for another day because of this experience. Mm -hmm. Right now, on the flip side, all heart and no art. That's gonna be a problem too. Mm -hmm. Just like how. The art can take you so far and no more. Mm -hmm. The heart mm -hmm. also can take you so far and no more. There needs to be that combination yes. and that balance, right? Um, because you will hear a person say, oh, listen to the words and not to the voice um, because they can't sing. Mm -hmm. But they, choose that. They, they, they are choosing music. Singing ministry. When it, that is not their calling. Right. So the gospel gets hindered because that, that channel is not the right channel to use to send the gospel. If Absolutely. you're better as um, a speaker, then you do that and you will get the gospel across in the right channel. But if you choose the wrong channel, then it is that you, then you're going to have barriers to your, your, your communication. You get what I'm saying? So that is that that is how I express the, the, the balance of heart and art. It comes together. It, it, it has to work together. It cannot go separate. So the professionalism, the standard must always be as high as possible as you can. Yes. And the heart and your relationship with God, the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit in everything that you do, committing yourself to the Lord and allowing him to use the art yes. and send the gospel. So I, I talk to a lot of young people and mm -hmm. young people seem very, very concerned about maintaining their heart of worship. You know, mm -hmm. I'm talking about young Christians who no one drop off. They just no one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how do you nurture a spirit of worship? Um, firstly, accountability. Hey, okay. Right? They always tell me that, you know, Latoya, you're, because I'm, I'm normally, I'm usually a loner. I'm not a cliquey type of girl. Um, so I don't normally walk with a, a big entourage and, and, same, same. and mm -hmm. thing. I, yeah, that, I don't do well with that. Mm -hmm. I will have one person to assist me in prayer and, you know, and intercession and to aid me in whatever else it is that needs to be aided. Uh, but I don't, I don't do the crowd thing. But in the same token, you need to have people in your circle that, you, that can hold you accountable. Hold you accountable spiritually, hold you accountable emotionally, yeah? And uh, I mean, every other alleys. So you need, you need a couple good friends. Yep. That you, can, that you can call on, that, that you build a relationship with over time where 
you they know you mm-hmm. so you don't always have to call and say hey i don't feel well today like out of the blue they will just call say yeah i'm gonna pick you up what mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i'm gonna pick you up in my spirit what is going on talk to mm-hmm. me yeah mm-hmm. um that kind of a thing and also to to let you know where you're going when you're going wrong you know and to to help to keep you on that that straight that, that straight and now exactly mm-hmm. yeah so your your circle of friends your your mm-hmm. your your inner circle mm-hmm. because it's not every you don't need a big circle or i would say you like especially for me i need layers yeah because i have to encounter with a lot of people mm-hmm I train a lot of um, churches, their praise teams and, and that kind of choirs and, you know, ministers and mm-hmm. students and all of that kind of a thing. So you, you have to interact with a lot of people um, on a regular basis. But then there, there is that circle. Mm-hmm. And then there, there needs to be your inner circle, your core circle, right? Um, that's, that, that's one. Two is just pray without ceasing, meaning that you make prayer part of your lifestyle. Your it doesn't have to, yes, you, you don't have to um, always, you know, be prostrate uh, for three, four, five hours. That's necessary at some point. Yeah, but you don't always have to be doing that to say you're praying. You're mm-hmm. driving, you're on the bus, you're walking, yeah, you're, yeah, you're praying. The other day I was driving and I just felt like praying and I started praying and I started covering this, that, every, everything, cover heart, cry, cover this, cover family, yeah. cover this and that. And, and it turned out into one long prayer, one long prayer <laughs> and driving up the hill and um, just a prayer going and going and going. And then my one of my intercessors just called me out of the blue and, and I answered the phone. And then the both of us started praying there on the phone while we're there driving and stuff. So, so it, 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 that, that is how I nurture my spirit of worship. Mm. Yeah, that yeah. is how I nurture it. Um, and you guard, guard, guard your ears guard your eyes wow it's not everything you must listen to young people is not everything you must listen to mm-hmm. it's not that uh, mark you i'm a musician by profession mm-hmm. and so i have to listen to different genres for different things to, in in order to be a rounded musician in order to be a rounded singer mm-hmm. yeah but there are so many Mm-hmm. artists out there there are so many um um genres out there that you can tap into without tapping in without with without absorbing certain yes. things so if you know if you know that a certain artist um reps a certain spirituality that does not connect with you then you can find another artist that 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 um is similar in terms of genre that you can listen to you understand what i'm saying yes. um so there are some artists that i i just don't allow in excellent yes. artists at their craft mm. mind you but it but i just don't why because i am aware of of their their who who they're singing about yes. who they're singing to it might sound ambiguous to the public, but, but you, you, you know, you know, yes. and, um, and, and because you know, if it is that you're ignorant to it, then, then that's a different yes. thing. But the fact that you are knowledgeable of it, then you have to be responsible for what you take in. Mm-hmm. And while I talk about taking in stuff and absorbing stuff, it's not everything that people say to you you're gonna absorb. I had to learn very early to develop what we call a ducks back mentality, where certain off. things just slide yeah. off. Because if you should absorb 
all of the negatives that people will say about you and say to you, and you know, it, you you would be a shell because all of your core is eaten out. Oh God. You understand? Um, so you have to you have to preserve that. So whatever defense mechanism you have to put up in order mm -hmm. to guard your heart and guard, you know, and guard your mind. So you 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 need to be very deliberate about that. What, while I'm listening to you, I recognize that self-awareness is in all of what you have said. You know, you have to know yourself, basically, know what you need to listen to, not listen to, know who you need to have around you, not have around you, all based on who you are. As an, as an individual, it's, it's a lot of self-awareness, knowing what you are about. Um, but there's a difference, I think, for persons who are a part of the worshiping congregation and believers who are just living a, a worshipful life and then the people who are called to lead people into worship like lead people into worship it's not it's not the same thing you it's know not. when a moderator or anybody really raises a song in a congregation and the church joins in song it's not the same as when a worship leader um, leads the same congregation, maybe even using the same song, same song into a moment of worship. That is a call. It's a specific call and a specific anointing, I believe. Um, and there may be persons who have just received that call. Like I said, I talked to a number of young people and they're so beautiful and wonderful and nice and God just nice. With <laughs> and, um, and there may be persons who are receiving that urge right now that they, they are feeling a pull to the stage. And it can seem egocentric or so because you're feeling a pull to the stage, <laughs> you know, but they're actually being um, pushed, nerd, um, nudged or so to lead people into worship. Um, what can you say to that young person? Or it may not even be that old person, that person, whatever age and stage. <laughs> um connect with someone who is already doing what it is that you think you're called to mm -hmm. yeah so connect with that person have them mentor you or you know that kind of a thing and um you 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 begin to learn you begin to glean from that you as i said before you pray you pray about it you pray Pray about what's because I mean I tell people all the while I I love singing background vocals I love arranging background vocals and if I can stay in the background and just do background vocals I would ah <laughs> uh, but then that call came to 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 um step out from the back. And to, to, to go in front, to go mm -hmm. solo from Grace Thrillers. Oh my God, no. I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't wanna. <laughs> yeah. I don't wanna. Um, because it takes so much more out of you. The responsibility is great. The attack is great. The warfare is great. But also the glory. The, 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 the fulfillment, the glory that is given to God, the, or the, the, the way that the Lord is able to use you mm -hmm. in ways that you would have never thought that you, you know, could you could be used. Um, the impact that you would be able to make on other persons and, and, and for them to know understand their calling and yeah. operate in their calling because you see one thing i've learned about this whole calling thing <laughs> is that um somebody else's blessing somebody else's mm -hmm. um deliverance somebody else's calling is wrapped up in your obedience to your call mm -hmm. so the longer it takes longer it takes for you to answer your call mm -hmm. it's the more it delays somebody else's mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and let me tell you, so I learned that the hard way. I learned it the, <laughs> the hard way. And um, when you do, the quicker you do that, it's the quicker you will see things start mm-hmm. to start to, to align themselves in your life and unfold in ways that you could never imagine. imagine. Yes. Like I see persons now leading worship and I see myself in them. I just did like things that I would have taught them over the yes. years. And you see how they're now operating yes. in, in their ministry. Yes. And I just have to just give God a love boy. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And and I have seen it too. Like I know persons, some of whom you would have taught, and I'm like, look how she look how she's doing it, like that's all yeah. Not in, you know, a comparative way, but look how she has learned. Look how she has look how look how she's listening to her team. Like I, like I see it, you know, and um it's good. It's good and it, it's beautiful to have seen. And thank you for walking in the call. So what we learn is that they need to answer the call quickly. And they need to take onto themselves a, a, a mentor, mentor or a godly mentor and mm-hmm. um and have seek it the Lord for yourself. Sure yes, seek the Lord and make sure that you are in alignment with what all that the Lord wants you to be doing in the sea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has saved the life of many persons. Um, I like to tell people that music is one of the only things that exists in heaven as music and it exists on the earth earth as music yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know if there's anything else on the earth that exists the same way on the earth as it does in heaven apart from from music it's life-saving it's it's a it's it's a spiritual thing even when we don't even when we misuse music it's just has far-reaching impacts and Mm -hmm. save the life of people so there are persons who may be suicidal who may be listening and just feel hopeless depressed and not they don't know what to do and maybe they've been holding on to a song maybe it's a one digga digga song or something they've been holding on to but is there any way you can encourage such a one in this moment with all that you've experienced and all of how god has poured into you in your own life through all the seasons you know how can you encourage such a person I um if it is that you think that you're at your wit's end and the only way you think that it would get better is if you're out of the picture. Can I tell you I've been there? I've been there many times actually. Persons would not know that because they see you on the stage and they see you smiling and they see you. Um but, but, <laughs> you know, but there are many times when I would feel as if they I can't bother with this in a man. And it's not like I don't try, but it's just not working out. And what has kept me is the fact that my spirit knows better. And and so in times when you would contemplate, yeah, okay, you're going to get the pills now, or you're going to cut yourself now, or it is that you're going to drink some bleach, I'm, I'm going to get real. Uh, what, whatever it is that you're going to go hang yourself, you'll go for the belt and hang it on the tree and whatever. But think about this. When you would have done that and you're quote unquote out of the picture, how would it, what, what comes next? You have damned yourself to eternal judgment, right? You would have made it like so much worse than if it had just all on until, until God worked it out. Yeah. Um, and so I, I say to you, one cry out to the Lord, do business about who hear you, who's around you. When you get to that frustrated point where you can't hold it in any longer, you can't facade it or mask it any longer, cry out to God. Yes, 
and find somebody, there must be at least one person in your life that you can speak to in that moment that can, that can hold, hold you, that can hold you and pull you from that edge, pull you back in from that edge because it is not a permanent position. Things in life will put us on the edge, yeah, and, and feel like it wants to push us over. But can I tell you that it is not the answer to jump in that scenario. Jump into the arms of God. Jump into the word of God. Jump into some gospel music. Go find a church, find a youth fellowship, find one YouTube um, praise and worship list or something. Yeah, channel your mind in the opposite direction. Yeah, man, the, 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 the woman with the issue of blood, she, she had that issue for 12 years. She had that condition for 12 years. Can you imagine being sick for 12 years nonstop, right? And it feels like it's not going to change. And she was adamant. She said, listen up. I, I would have loved if Jesus would have just hugged me up with him robe and put him whole robe around me. But, but if, if I, I can get the robe, all I need is the hem. All I need is a touch of the hem. And believe me, if you reach out and touch just the hem, I said, Jesus, I need you in this moment. Believe me. Jesus is going to say, virtue, just leave me. Who touched me? Who called me? Who just called me a while ago? And help will come. Help will come. All it may, all it may need is a hug from somebody. All it may need is a smile or a handshake from somebody. Yeah? But the, 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 the trick of the enemy is to make you feel like you are the only person in the world that is feeling this way at this moment. That is his tactic to make you feel as if nobody else has ever had this thing before. This is unique to you and there is nobody to help you. Nobody's going to come to your rescue. Mm -hmm. Lies from the pit of hell. There is nothing new under the sun. So if it is that you are feeling a particular way, chances are someone else has been there and has overcome. And if they can overcome, so can you. So push, push, push a little harder. I have a song called Never Let Go. Yeah, you gotta push a little push a little and when it feels insurmountable right keep the prize keep keep the end result in view and just have a, a little faith mm. as small as a mustard seed you know how small a mustard seed is like you can't see it with the naked eye yeah but if you have faith the bible says as small as a mustard seed you can you you can you can be pulled back. You can be you can be reined in from the edge. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. Hear me and hear me good. Don't do it. Find there is help. There is help available to you. Don't think that oh this is the end. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are you could be as old as sarah the promise still stands god is still faithful and he will bring his purpose to pass in your life amen amen where can we find your album your way it's available on all digital platforms Apple Music, Spotify, Lisa, Tidal, all of them, all of them, they're all there. Um, if you would like a physical CD, you can just email me 
at altuanproductions at gmail.com. That's A-L-T-O-I-N-E productions at gmail.com. Um, or just hit me up on my social media platforms, Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, all of it. It's Latoya HD. Instagram is Latoya HD Real. And, and just send me a DM and I can get the CD to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a conversation with Latoya Hall Donor, music minister, gospel speaker, praise speaker, worship leader, anything God wants her to be in a moment. That's who she is. Thank you so much for joining us. Latoya, I hope this conversation was a blessing to everyone who have heard it. If this conversation was useful for you, I beg you do share it. Share it. You don't have to like the video if you don't want to. You don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. It's okay. Just share. Yeah, but you must still do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Share, share this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good, good day. We live good, we walk good, and we love each other. Bye, people. Bye. Yeah.